Hey everyone, welcome to day four of my 12 days of interactive December dailies video series. Today I'm working on day two of my December daily album and this one is going to feature a slider pull tab that is going to reveal a pocket card underneath and what's going to be really cool about this one is that there is going to be an element on the page that will slide along as I'm sliding this pull tab out. Before I dive into today's video, I thought I would share an unboxing of Layered Life's All Is Bright kit first, um, just because they are a relatively new company, so I just wanted to give them a quick shout out because some of you might not be as familiar with their products. So um, they don't do subscriptions or anything or any monthly releases, they just do um, kind of like one-off releases. Um, so right now they have this All Is Bright collection, which comes with some pattern papers. There are 24 in this pack and they are six by six. And they also do have a digital pack. So I've actually printed out all of their pattern papers at the size that I prefer to work in, which is um, eight and a half by eight and a half. And then that way I can cut them down to make my outside the peach protector six by eight pages or alternately my life crafted album pages which are about five by eight um so we have a variety of papers here i'll just kind of give you a flip through to see what they're like and the color palette is um kind of like that and i did do an ink pairings video for this earlier last month as well with this kit you will get a sticker sheet so the sticker sheets don't come in all of the kits sometimes they change their components up um, sometimes it's just ephemera and sometimes they include stickers I think this is like the first time that they've included patterned papers not sure if Christine is going to continue to do those in future months it just depends on the type of kit she wants to have so um, there are some stickers here these are kind of similar to um, the stickers that were offered in a previous month's kit. So they are, I think she calls them velour stickers. So they're, they've kind of got like a satiny finish um, and they're kind of thin but plasticky. So I would say they're like very durable compared to like cardstock stickers, for example. And then there are two packs of ephemera. So there's the Mix It Up Ephemera pack. And then there is the, let me see what this one is called. Um, I think this is some sort of medley. Let me see. It, it always says on the top of the pack here. And then sometimes I have um, my pieces in the way so I can't exactly see it. Let me see if I can shake it off camera there. Anyways, you get a pack of those. And then a pack of these pocket cards as well. Um, these are just from days 1 through to 12. And I will take them out to measure these um, in terms of dimensions for you guys. So these are about two and a half inches wide by four inches tall. So they would fit inside a three by four pocket. You would just have to add something along the sides there or put this in the middle or um, something like that. So let's start with the um, this pack here. So this pack has a whole bunch of window cards. I would like to refer to them as um, window medley. <laughs> that makes so much sense. Um, and of course, they do have this backing sheet that you can use as pattern paper as well. So I've kind of punched out all of the little windows that come in these cards. Um, of course, you can save these for, um, I like to save them for layering just in case I need something that's a bit small. So you'll see some of the layering bits here that I have. And then I will put the actual windows here. We have some fun tree ones. Um, some that are kind of like have this arched frame and I just think these are so much fun to create interactive elements in fact um, I am going to be doing this video which is going to be a process video on um, interactive elements featuring these pieces this is a fallout from this window here of course you can use that tree shape by itself um, more windows here so you can see that um, they are all different sizes and different shapes. And there are some that have um, kind of like naughty words as well. So I will just um, give you a heads up on that before I share this next one. Um, I, I think these are so much fun because um, holidays aren't all like merry and bright um, 
sometimes things don't go the way that we want them to. So um, some of these have more snarky sayings, which are like one of my favorite ones is this one here. So I'll probably use this on a spread soon. But here are all the window cards. Um, of course, these are available digitally as well if you wanted to um, use them as larger elements. I could see making this into like a large shaker pouch. I think that would be really cute if you were to get the digitals and then just use that um, as a larger page. And then I think one of the other design team members had done some stitching along this card as well. I think that was super cool. So just putting these to one side and then moving on to the next one, which is the Mix It Up Ephemera. Oopsies. Let's not lose these pieces here. <laughs> So this one more kind of has like pocket cards or not really pocket cards because none of them are really three by four size or four by six size, but they have um, journaling spots on them so that you can add your own journaling. And again, some of these are a bit snarkier um, as well. For example, this one here, I love that, adore. We have some kind of like speech bubbles or you can use these as like little turning elements if you wanted. So there's a couple of those there, plus the follow-up bits, of course, that you can use for your other pages. Um, some nice floral ephemera as well. We have a couple um, that are kind of like this drawer shape that I really liked, um, that I used some of in last month's Leered Life video. There's one with a bit of a naughty word. <laughs> I love that. So more of those circle shapes, that is upside down, I'll turn that, and then more of these drawer ones, so I'll just kind of put them all together in a pile there. That one says no more money, because who doesn't feel like that during the month of December and leading up to Christmas? And then we have a couple of these tab ones as well that are different colors have this one that says Mary, Mary, Mary. Um, all I want for Christmas is uh, coffee and scrapbook stuff. I, I love that too. I'm not much of a coffee drinker though, so I probably, um, that one probably won't be used for, for my pages. More of these um, little cards with the notches on them. Um, and then some of these smaller tabs here. And then again, more of these um, tabs that have the, that one says Jolly, more poinsettias in this fun retro vibe um, color palette. And you can't see that one. There we go. So that's everything that's included in the Layered Life All is Bright collection. And stay tuned for the process video. To start off, I've already printed out all of the pattern papers from this kit into um, enlarged formats. So I've printed them at about eight and a half inches wide by 11 inches tall. And that's just so that I can use them outside the page protector in my six by eight album. So I've cut it down so that it's about seven inches wide by eight and a quarter inches tall. And now I'm just looking at the stars in the um, pattern paper. And this kind of reminds me of a night sky. So I'm going to be using it as a background to my cityscape. And I noticed there are a group of six stars here that kind of form a heart shape. So if you connect the dots, they kind of form a heart shape. And I thought this would be the perfect landing point to place my number of the day. Um, I'm using the chipboard numbers from Ali Edwards throughout the album so that it's just one consistent number font um, throughout my entire album. And so I'm just going to take this poking tool. This is from Tim Holtz and Tonic Studios. And I am just going to poke some holes, um, just connecting these six stars together into the form of a heart shape. And then I'm going to take this off camera and stitch this together um, using um, just a simple running stitch with some gold metallic thread. So here you'll see that I've finished stitching my heart shape onto that starry sky and I've cut out a few additional pieces as well. Um, this is another one of the pattern peepers from the All Is Bright kit and I've cut it down to seven inches wide by five inches tall and then I've 
scored on the five inch side at half an inch and four and a half inches. And that creates two half inch hinges that I can then use to form kind of like a slider pocket um, across my page here. You'll notice that I had rotated the pattern paper so that the stripes are going vertically. Um, and that's just because um, once I finish putting all of my ephemera pieces um, on this cityscape um, background piece, um, the stripes are kind of going to look like a sidewalk. Um, and I really wanted that kind of city vibe look to my layout. You'll notice that I'm starting to pull in some ephemera pieces here that kind of look like buildings um, that a city might have. So I have that pink archway that says I finished all my Christmas shopping said no one, which kind of reminds me with that arch shape of a storefront. Um, and then we have a little door that kind of reminds me of like a hotel door, for example. And then we have this arch that says happy holiday, which kind of reminded me of like a front store display type of thing. And then I have two in the back. There's one that has a grid type pattern which kind of reminded me of like windows to like an office building and then that long journaling piece that says checking it twice um, with the journaling blocks across from it kind of reminded me of again some apartment buildings or something like that. Now the only thing that was left to complete this scene was some sort of automobile to kind of drive across all of these shops and since the layered life kit didn't have any sort of car or anything like that. I reached into my mittens and mistletoe ephemera pack from Crate Paper and pulled out this Christmas trailer and I thought that would work perfectly for this layout. So the idea behind the spread is I want to have a journaling card that will slide into that yellow section of pattern paper on the spread. And most of that yellow paper is actually going to be covered up by all of these storefronts. Um, and I want the car to slide along with the journaling card as I'm sliding it out. But I also want to be able to see part of that journaling card um, when it's hidden inside um, behind that yellow piece of pattern paper. So I'm going to take this pink arch shape um, that says I finished all my Christmas shopping and cut out that arch shape so that I can have a little peekaboo effect and peek behind it um, before I actually slide this mechanism out. And I want to make sure that the bottom of that archway lines up with the bottom of all of my buildings on this strip um, down this sidewalk here. So um, just tracing this out in pencil before I adhere that arch shape down. And I'm just going to take my cutting tool. Um, this is just my Fisker's paper trimmer. And I'm going to cut kind of around this arch shape, making sure that the bottom is lined up where I want it to be. But the other cut marks around the rest of the arch can be slightly larger um, than the actual arch itself because you're actually not going to see that from behind um, once you cover this up with the arch shape ephemera piece. So just adhering that down into place, making sure that the bottom of the ephemera piece matches the bottom of that arch shape. And if you do have any adhesive that's going to be showing um, through the back of your mechanism, you want to make sure that you're using an anti-static powder tool or something to blot off that adhesive so that your journaling card that's going to be sliding in and out of this pocket isn't going to be stuck to that arch shape. Next, I'm just taking the other ephemera pieces and adhering them down along this, um, making sure that they are all lined up with the bottom of that same ephemera piece that we started with at the beginning. For this window arch shape that looks like a display, I am going to cut out some pattern paper. Um, this is just from the six by six pack that was um, provided in the kit. And I'm going to cut that down so that at least there's kind of like a building that's associated with this window. Um, so just trimming it down kind of, um, I don't really have exact measurements for this. I just kind of went with what makes sense relative to the height of these other storefronts on my um, cityscape here. And I will have to eventually trim off the very left side of um, this storefront here, um, making sure that it's all nice and lined up along that left edge but that doesn't really matter as much to me. You can still kind of read that it says happy holiday. 
As I'm adhering these taller pieces down, you'll notice that I did overlap the tops of the buildings with the top of that hinge um, a bit so that the buildings are poking out above the hinge and I made sure not to have adhesive um, over where that top of the hinge is going to be. Um, in the end it doesn't really matter because everything is going to get adhered down onto the page but as I'm shifting things around and adjusting my buildings to where I want them to be, um, especially these um, tall pieces that I'm going to put behind my main city sidewalk. I just want to be able to shift these around so I didn't want to necessarily have adhesive um, on the backs of those um, taller um, building pieces on my main strip. Just trimming down this window card to get rid of that actual window so that I can use the pattern part as my building and I think that looks um, just like an apartment building with um, all of the windows, maybe some with lights and some with not. And once I have these positioned approximately where I want them to be in my night sky, um, I am going to start adhering these down. But first of all, I'm going to do a bit of stamping on this one journaling card, um, just stamping the words making a list. And then on the side, it says checking it twice. Um, if you remember from my previous videos, I am trying to include some sort of some song lyric um, on all of my layouts this year. Um, so making a list, checking it twice is a song lyric that I definitely um, sing a lot when I'm making my Christmas list. And I'm just using the Citrus Twist Harper Alphabet stamp to stamp this out, including that dot 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 to indicate that it does continue on the side of that ephemera piece. And when I am adhering this one ephemera piece down, I am going to make sure that you can still read that font that's along the side, um, just making sure that that's not obscured by my um, main street um, sidewalk piece. Before I work on making my slider mechanism, I am just going to adhere this bottom hinge down onto the bottom of this starry night sky page, um, just so that I can get kind of relatively where everything is going to sit before I start making cuts into um, this bottom portion of the sidewalk. And I did have a few problems making sure all of my um, edges were nice and aligned, even though I'm sure I cut everything to seven inches wide. Um, and I also had a bit of problems with this um, hole punch as well. You'll see that I had tried to make um, a punched hole and it didn't kind of go all the way um, into the album. So I had to cover it up with some washi tape. Um, that's just the gold foil washi tape from the Ali Edwards collection this year. And I did manage to save that page. I would have been really sad had I not been able to fix that error. And this is actually the second time this year already that this um, paper trimmer, um, sorry, the hole punch has um, um, given me some problems. So I just have to be really careful about making sure that the paper is all the way inside the hole punch before I actually punch down into my pages. So now I'm going to start working on my main slider element. And I have these um, they're actually called slider elements and they're from My Favorite Things. I'll leave a link in the, the description box down below to where you can find these. And they just make it easier to make slider mechanisms. They're specifically designed for card making, um, but of course I like to use them in my scrapbooking projects as well. So because I don't have the associated die to make a slider for um, this slider element, I'm going to make my own slider track. And how I'm going to do that is first I'm going to position my trailer um, kind of where I want it to be relative to the storefront. So I kind of want it to be overlapping the storefronts a bit so that it looks like it's driving um, in front of the stores. And then I'm going to take that slider element um, and just place it behind where that car is going to be. And then I'm going to trace around the very left edge of that slider piece just with some pencil marks. And you'll notice that I did position that slider element um, kind of along where I want the um, trailer to stop sliding on the left hand side because I don't want it going past where the binder rings would be. And now I'm going to take my regular hole punch and just punch that hole out um, where the left side of that slider element would be. 
And then I can use that as a kind of guide with my paper trimmer to trim along the top edge of that hole punch mark and the bottom edge of that hole punch mark to make a track um, going across my entire sidewalk piece. And my slider element is going to be able to slide um, just fine, um, just smoothly inside that slider track. Now, if for some reason you don't want your slider piece to come all the way out, like let's say you want your journaling card to stay inside the pocket, um, and then you just want to be able to view um, the journaling from inside that arched shaped window, um, you can just make that same um, circle punch on the right side as well where you would like the trailer to stop and then just cut your track up until that hole punch mark instead of cutting it all the way through that right edge like I have here. The thing about cutting it all the way through that right edge is that the right side of the page kind of loses a bit of stability. So you'll see that this um, track section here is um, kind of gaping when I don't have um, that slider mechanism locked into place. Um, and it kind of makes it a bit more difficult to align um, all of my pieces together, but I really don't mind in this case because I really wanted my journaling card to slide all the way out so that I can look at the back of it where I'm going to have more journaling later on. Next up, I'm going to create the backer piece that's going to go um, inside this pocket because I want the bottom where that track is exposed to look like sidewalk. So I'm going to be backing that part of um, that piece with more pattern paper that has the lines going vertically. And then I want you to be able to see inside the archway to a scene um, that I'm going to be doing some stamping with later on instead of the night sky because when you look into the store you want to be able to see inside the store um, when this journaling card is removed. So first I'm going to start by positioning where I want that sidewalk piece to be um, and this is just going to go along the bottom part of this white piece of cardstock here. And you do want to make sure that this yellow piece of pattern paper isn't going to be seen um, through your archway as well because you only want that to cover up the um, track portion of your sidewalk. I did have some problems as well with um, making sure that this sidewalk was aligned because I wanted to make sure that all of those vertical lines were aligned even inside that track. So I did have to peel off um, the section that I had already adhered down into place and then replace that with a new piece of pattern paper. So that did take a bit of fiddling around to make sure that everything was nice and properly aligned. Um, but I did manage to get that to the point where I was satisfied with it eventually. And once that's done, you can then go ahead and adhere the back of the um, white piece of cardstock to that top hinge um, with the pattern paper and then adhere that whole entire panel down onto your base page. Just making sure that I have holes punched through um, the white piece of cardstock as well now. Um, so just going back with my hole puncher and making sure those holes are punched and then making sure that everything is nice and aligned on the left edge of that piece of paper as well. And now we're going to work on this insert that goes um, into the slider pouch. So I have a piece of quite a thick piece of acetate here. Um, I did want something a bit more sturdy than your regular pieces of acetate. So I will leave a link down in the description box to where I purchased this um, thicker piece of acetate. And the reason why I'm backing this with acetate is because I wanted that slider portion um, that's going to be showing through the track to remain clear so that I can see that sidewalk piece underneath where that clear section is going to be. And I've cut that down to six inches wide by slightly under four inches tall so that I, it can slide smoothly um, in and out of this pocket. And for the top part of that slider portion, um, I just have another piece of pattern paper from this kit. I've cut it down to three inches tall so that it can be seen um, inside that arched frame, but then you can't see it um, in that slider track. 
And the reason why I cut these both to six inches wide was because I wanted them to not be able to interfere with the binder rings, um, but I wanted the um, slider piece to go far enough that it can go towards the very end of that slider track along the left side of the page. So now with this slider card um, inside the slider pocket, I'm just going to start adhering my um, slider elements down onto the acetate portion just inside the slider track so that it can slide freely um, along the slider track. And I am going to use two slider elements just to help keep this a bit more stable as it's sliding through um, just because that piece of acetate is a bit of a heavier element. So um, I am going to position this second slider element um, just where it's going to be hidden by the back of this trailer here. As for the type of adhesive that I'm using, I am using my Gina K Connect glue. Um, I find that for interactive elements like this that do need to be a bit more heavy duty, um, I do want to be using wet adhesive, especially for these smaller pieces um, because they just stick a bit better. So once I have my two slider elements glued into place on top of the acetate inside the slider track, I'm just going to carefully slide these out, um, making sure that they're not disturbed um, because the glue isn't quite dry yet. And then I'm going to put more glue on um, so that I can adhere this trailer into place. And I just want to make sure that the back of that trailer where the Christmas tree is, is going to be covering that back part of the slider mechanism, um, but it's not going to get in the way of the binder holes. And now that that slider piece is ready, I am just going to put a stamping block on top of this and wait a few hours for this to completely dry before moving on to the next step. So while this is drying, um, I did want to step out my little scene inside this archway here. I am going to keep it relatively simple and flat just because I am going to be sliding um, a slider element inside this pocket and I don't want anything to get caught on the slider mechanism. So I'm going to be using some of the um, inks that I picked out in my ink pairings video. These are the colors Marshland and Sea Forest from Altenew, and I'm using the 4x6 present stamp from Ellie Edwards to stamp out a present inside this frame, um, just because um, when I'm making a list and going shopping, at the end of the list, um, after everything is done, there should be presents, right? <laughs> um, so that's just what I'm stamping inside this frame here. And fortunately, there are presents that fit perfectly inside the frame. Next up to complete my scene, I am just going to create a bit of a scene inside this archway as well with the um, journaling card in place. So I just slid the journaling card inside um, that little slider pocket and I'm going to use some of the stickers on the sticker sheet that came in the layered life kit to adhere some trees inside this archway here and again they fit perfectly um, I'm not sure if Christine had purposely designed it that way um, but I liked that these embellishments were flat as well um, just so that um, when I'm sliding this in and out I don't have to worry about anything getting caught I did make some pencil marks along the edges of the archway as well, um, just on my journaling cards so that when I'm typing out my journaling on clear sticker paper, I can kind of have a frame of reference where I want my journaling to end so that you don't see any of the journaling when this journaling card is all the way hidden um, inside this pocket. And after I've adhered that clear sticker paper down into place, I'm going to make a little tab so that it can serve as like a pull tab to pull this journaling card out from this pocket. So I have a piece of leftover red pattern paper from when I made that um, leftmost apartment building type um, thing with the display window. And this piece measures about two and a quarter inches tall by one and a half inches wide. Um, and I am just going to use my We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board to make a tab out of this by um, folding it in half and then punching on both sides with that notch punch in the middle of the punch board. And then I can apply um, double-sided adhesive onto the back of the entire piece and adhere that onto the rightmost side of my journaling card. 
I am going to add a bit of journaling to the back of this journaling card um, as well after I've finished doing my um, December shopping for Christmas and that will probably be adhered um, just onto a plain piece of white cardstock and adhered directly onto that back piece of acetate um, later on in the month. And to finish off the spread, I am going to add a couple of um, star sticker pieces. Um, these came from a pack that I got from Michael's. And I also adhered that number two chipboard piece down um, directly over where I have that stitched heart. So here's a look at the final layout. I'm so excited with how this turned out. Um, it did take a bit of fiddling around and a bit of pre-planning, but hopefully now that I've done all of the pre-planning for you, um, it's probably not as hard for you guys to make this interactive spread if you would like to make something similar to mine. I hope you enjoyed this process video as much as I enjoyed putting this spread together. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you liked this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more December daily process videos. Thanks so much for watching.